Hello, healers and health seekers. It is me, Ichoda, healing with medical medium information for four years now, healing so many symptoms and conditions, mast cell activation disorder, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, hypothyroid, migraines, PCOS, SIBO, POTS, dysautonomia, chronic fatigue syndrome, so many other symptoms and conditions. All of that's in the description box below if you wanna go down that rabbit hole or learn more about what I've healed. But today I wanna to talk about the brain fog. The brain fog comes in so many different forms and I have had several different forms throughout my healing journey. And I had really, really bad brain fog when I first started healing, and obviously before that, when I found the medical medium information, I had really bad brain fog. It was so bad. It felt like trying to think through pea soup. It was just like I couldn't connect to anything, and I always felt a little bit dissociated, like not quite in my body. Sometimes I would see myself do things or hear myself say things that I didn't feel connected to, and it felt like I was watching or listening to somebody else. And was difficult to concentrate and focus on anything, difficult to read, difficult to even kind of understand what was going on in a movie or follow a plot or a train of thought or anything. <laughs> if I was talking to somebody, it would be difficult to understand. And for me, there were other pieces to that too. Like if somebody would ask me a question, my brain would immediately go blank. I would have had the information as they were asking the question and right before, but it would just go blank and I would just not be able to find my words. I also had difficulty with words, <laughs> uh, like a, my neurological fatigue, like just had a difficulty with, with finding the words like I am right now. That's so funny. Uh, and I would have, I would have even difficulty knowing the, what the words were. So I would end up sort of describing something and and in my head, like I could picture myself like talking around it, but not finding the actual word. So like talking around it, even though I had the actual vocabulary and I had the words filed somewhere in my brain and I'd used the words before. And then sometimes it would be simple things. Like I couldn't think of the word table. And I'd say something like, Oh, uh, you know, the it's the round thing that you put stuff on and sit at, <laughs> you know, like I couldn't, I couldn't access like just the word I was looking for. So I'd have to describe it. And, and I felt like a lot of that had to do with the concussion I had, but I think a lot of it was also neurological fatigue and neurological symptoms that happen when you have the Epstein-Barr virus in your body, you can get neurological symptoms that affect you. And I would have this fatigue that went with it and it just was sort of like, it was just like there was sort of a veil over everything. And drinking the celery juice, doing the heavy metal detox smoothie, eating the healing foods, taking out the foods that fed pathogens, starting to take supplements, all of those things impacted that brain fog greatly and helped a lot. I would say the most immediate help that I saw was from the celery juice. Just, it just blew me away. And healing is not linear. It's not a straight line. It's three steps forward, two steps back. So there have been, I would say that, you know, my brain fog had been vastly healed for the most part, but there have definitely been times throughout the process where I will go through periods where I don't have like as, it's never as bad as it was ever, ever, ever. But I will have periods where I'm less connected, less motivated, less clear, even a little foggy, just kind of don't feel connected to things. I feel slightly dissociated. Sometimes I'll have trouble focusing. Sometimes I'll have a hard time finding my words. Sometimes I'll have a hard time if somebody asks me a question. So I'll have a very, what I would call a much milder version of the brain fog that I used to have. And lately I've noticed that I'm kind of going through a phase of it again, where I've just been feeling sort of 
disconnected from things, sort of dissociated and having a hard time focusing, having a hard time reading. I can read, I can understand things, but sometimes it takes a minute. And I had an episode the other night where it was even different. So this was with the medical medium lives. I watch the live on Instagram and then I, I go to Facebook and I watch the live on Facebook. It's the same one, but he does, sometimes the information slightly different. It's like it's, he's saying the same thing, but sometimes he'll say in between, he'll say different things. So I was watching the Instagram live and I was just feeling like I couldn't focus on what he was saying and I couldn't connect to what he was saying. And I was hearing words, but I just wasn't getting what he was saying. And I was like, what is going on? Like I just kept, and I kept trying. I like uh, actually hid the comments from the live so that I wouldn't be trying to read the comments and you know, so that wouldn't keep me from focusing. And, and I'm watching and I just couldn't, I'm just like, what is, I cannot focus on this. I cannot get what he's saying. And then while the live was going on, I was having some uh, peaches and cream ice cream that's like frozen peaches, frozen bananas, vanilla powder, and maple syrup. So good. I was eating that, I think, while I was watching the live. And then after the live, right before Facebook, I made some, I steamed some asparagus. I think that's all I ate. I ate the steamed asparagus. Anyway, then I'm watching the Facebook live. And I don't know if what I ate had to do with this or if it was the venue or what the heck it was, but I'm watching the Facebook live and I connected to everything. I could understand what he was saying. I wasn't having any problems. I was there, I was present and I was in the information and I was like, what just happened? Like I was literally the same thing on just two different platforms. I watched the Instagram on my phone. I watched Facebook on my computer cause I don't have it on my phone. And I'm like, why? was it so different? You know, like what just occurred that made it so completely different? And I still don't quite know, but it just made me think about how I get that brain fog and how that brain fog, it's almost like it can become a hook. I sort of visualize things in my mind in a certain way. And when we're doing well and things are going well, darkness wants to hook us and it looks for our wounds to hook into. That's how I see it in my mind. I see it as a hook, like a, like a visual hook, hooking into our wounds. Like I see our wounds as sort of dark spots in our psyche, I guess, in our consciousness or whatever, in our soul, like bruises. That's how I see them. Like they're bruises on our body and it's so th like they're more tender and thinner or something, like thinner skin. And then, so I see it as like a hook hooking into, like darkness can hook into. And I notice that when I have, when I'm in that kind of brain fog, it seems like it's easier for it to hook, right? And when I say darkness, I mean things that will take you off your track, things that will bring you down, things that will get you in adrenaline, in fight or flight. Sometimes you don't even notice when it's happening. Like you think the thoughts you're having are your own and they're not. It's something trying to hook you. And you can tell when it is because it's negative stuff. It's like, oh, I'm not good enough for this. I'm never going to be able to do this. I can't accomplish this. You know, they don't like me. I'm not a good person. Comparing yourself to others like, oh, other people are so much better at this than me. It's all of that like negative self-talk but it's not self-talk. You think it is because you're so used to hearing it. We've been hearing it for our whole lives, but it's really not. It's really, it's, it's darkness. It's darkness speaking through people or speaking through us in our own voice. Like we think it's our own thoughts. And there was a time I think when medical medium actually said in a live somewhere, I don't know, it was a long time ago. And he said, you, you just don't know how many thoughts aren't your own. And that's something that I've been exploring with people for the past few years and talking to people about and thinking about how many thoughts are not my own. And then when I did the class with Eileen Crispell and Amy Jones, and we were talking about 
separating from what's not yours. And what I realized is that honestly, most of the time, what's not yours is what's negative and makes you feel bad. If it makes you feel bad about yourself, if it makes you lose compassion for yourself, if it makes you feel like you're not good enough, it's not yours. It's not yours. It didn't come from you. It's not a part of you, but it hooks in is what happens. It hooks in. But the beautiful thing is we do have the ability to unhook ourselves, especially when we're realizing that that's what's happening. You know, cause when I got that brain fog the other day and I was noticing it, I noticed that hook got there and then something started activating a wound. It was a wound around that I have around relationships and around friendships and around keeping friendships. We have traveled a lot. Um, we've moved to several different places in the past 15 years and uh, we haven't really stayed anywhere longer than five years. And so we've lost a lot of friendships and you know, as we've moved and then with chronic illness, we lost more friendships and even in healing where I was like reconnecting with people or still connected to certain people, I lost friendships in the process of healing <laughs> because I don't know why it's like people got threatened by that. I was healing. I don't know why sometimes you're just in a different place as somebody and they don't want to come along for the journey. And for whatever reason, I have a big wound around losing friendships. And then when I get that negative voice happening, what it says to me is, you know, people don't want to be your friend. You can't keep a relationship, whatever. And it'll say things like that. And so that's what was hooking me is like, Oh, here's, there was another person that like, I couldn't, I can't seem to connect to like every time we try to connect, it just isn't happening. And, and we've tried. And then I'm like, I guess this person just kind of isn't in my life or whatever. And the tendency, the hook is that that voice goes to that place where it's, it says things about it. Like, Oh, they don't want to connect with you. You're not important to them. You know, people make time for what's important and you know, you're just not, you don't matter. You're not a priority. There's a lot of, you don't matter in the wound in the hook. It's, it's always something like that. And what I notice is, so I notice that start to happen and I can either talk to somebody about it and process it out so that it'll stop. Or I can even notice it for myself and say, ah, it's the hook. I'm getting hooked. And when I think about I'm getting hooked because I, I know that I'm getting hooked because that's not coming from me. The who I really am, the light that I really am, the light that you really are, the light that we all are. That's not who created that negative voice in your head saying those things to you. And those thoughts aren't even really your thoughts. So those thoughts aren't really even my thoughts. They're just thoughts. Maybe I've heard somebody say them before. Maybe somebody said that stuff to me and maybe at the time I bought into it. It doesn't mean it's true. So when I realized, oh, I'm getting hooked. I now can say, okay, what's going on? What am I being hooked about? And then I can, it's like I can shift it and I can get out of it because I realize, oh, this isn't mine. And then I can ask for help. So I can either talk to a friend or I can call on the angels. I can pray. I could do emotion code. I could do breathing. I could go outside and I could be with my plants. I could breathe. I could listen to bird song. I could watch the bees. I could do something, which all of those are tools, you know, being in nature, bird song, bees, meditation, all that stuff is tools that medical medium has taught in all of his books and radio shows and blog posts and stuff like that. And I've noticed that all of that really helps me. It helps me shift out of it. And even noticing it helps me shift out of it. Even noticing, Oh, is this mine? No, it's not mine. It's the hook. It's the hook. So I'm like, okay, I'm getting hooked. And this brain fog lately too has, 
So I noticed like I was kind of having some soreness come back into my body, which I have not had in a really long time. I'm like, where is this coming from? How am I getting kind of sore and tight in my shoulders and, and my hips a little bit? I'm like, that's not, I don't usually experience that. Am I having a flare? And then I thought, wait a minute. I haven't taken my supplements in like a really, I'm, well, I haven't, I've been really irregular about taking my supplements ever since I did the 369 cleanse because you don't really need to take them for the advanced and so I don't necessarily take them for the advanced and then it's just kind of like I got out of the habit. It's like I lost my momentum somehow and <laughs> and I'm like, what happened? And again, with the brain fog, and the hook and being hooked, my tendency is to let that thought, that thoughts play in the background about like, oh, what's wrong with you? And I was, that's what was going on with me is I was feeling totally disconnected, kind of not present with anything, like sort of this fatigue, but kind of just more of a fog where it's like not motivated and I didn't seem to be able to, it's like I could get the foods, but it was like all an effort and I never quite knew what I was gonna do and I wasn't fully taking my supplements and it was just like things were hard. I felt really overwhelmed and I felt like I have too much to do and I, I can't seem to get it done. But then when I think I'm like, it's not really that much. I don't know why this is all feeling so overwhelming to me. And then it just would compound and I would just kind of get down on myself and I just kind of had this moment of clarity, you know, and I was like, oh, wait, I haven't been taking my supplements. That might explain the soreness in my body and it also actually might explain the brain fog because usually I take celery force and I also take magnesium glycinate and neuromag, all that help and vitamin C and L-lysine. Like I take all the things <laughs> and I haven't been taking, I've been taking my tinctures, but I haven't been taking the, the capsules. And I thought, I wonder if this has anything to do with why I'm getting this soreness in my body and why I've had a little bit more brain fog. Now I do think that things have amped up and made the brain fog worse, but I think all the more reason for me to be taking all of my supplements. And it was interesting because it was just kind of like, not in my control in a way. Like I just was sort of disconnected from it again. But once I realized, I'm like, ah, there's the hook, there's the brain fog. I'm like, okay. And Medical Medium did do a live recently about the different kinds of brain fog that people might be experiencing lately. And he talked about celery force and it is it's been really important for me. Maybe part of what's going on and why, and also why I felt like I can't get back into a cleanse. Like maybe all of this is like, maybe I just really need to kind of focus on making sure I take my supplements every day and also not getting hooked. And I don't mean like, oh, I'm so stoic and great that I can never get hooked. I just mean like having an awareness of being hooked and then having compassion for myself when it happens. Because part of also what's been going on is I haven't been very compassionate to myself because I've been in, hooked, I've, I've been in the wound. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> but I feel really good about the realization and it just hammers home how important it is to have that self-compassion. And when you can't find it, you talk to somebody, you reach out to somebody in the medical medium community and you go, man, I'm feeling really down on myself. I feel like I can't do anything right. I feel like I'm just screwing up left and right. And I was telling a friend of mine this, <laughs> I did, cause I did that, I reached out and I was telling a friend of mine and she just was laughing at me and not in a mean way, in a just like, it's so funny because she's like, I know how clean you eat. Like right now you're eating fat free, salt free, and you're mad at yourself because you're eating potatoes instead of all raw. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, do you hear yourself right now? And I said, I know, I know, because if somebody else, anybody else came to me and said this, like, oh, I can't get it together or whatever, I would be like, are you kidding me? Do you know what you're doing for yourself? This is amazing. You're doing amazing. 
like fat free, salt free, what? Like that's not easy and you're doing it and you've been doing it for months and I mean the salt free is newer, but the fat free has been going on for a long time. I'm like, but with your my own self, <laughs> I'm like, I have exacting standards. I have like these high standards for myself and I'm not doing what I should be doing. And, and I was talking to her about how it's so easy to take yourself down that dangerous, dangerous road called what if. Well, what if I had just done this from the beginning? And what if I had just done this? And wouldn't I be blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. And this person's doing this and they did that and blah, 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 blah. It's so stupid because what? It does nothing for you. It does nothing for you. All it is is a hook into your wound and takes you down a path that is what it's like it's what darkness wants it's like it takes you down a dark path and then it takes you eventually if you let it go if you keep going with it it can take you off your path and like you can get sucked into it and admired in it and feeling like oh, i have like you don't have purpose and it's you're not good enough and you just can't do it so why bother and all this stuff and we were both laughing at me <laughs> because it is easy to get into that. But the beautiful thing is that, you know, talking to her and my other friend, like that helps me be clear on it. It helped me see it and it helped me get out of it. It helped me be like, ah, there I am. It's so easy to go down that path and I can feel it wanting to pull me and I can feel the heaviness of it. <sighs> and I can stop and I can call on angels. There's kind of two things that I like to do that are kind of my go-to as I do them all the time. So I call on the angels to help me clear. And the angels I particularly call on, uh, angel of air, angel of peace, angel of light, angel of deliverance, unknown angels, and my guardian angel. And I ask them to help clear my energy field of all people, places, things, and entities, return to my body, my mind, soul, and spirit, and then I just close my eyes and I breathe and I feel my feet on the floor and I feel myself in my body because it's, it's grounding. And you could take it a step further and you could do medical medium grounding meditation that is in his first book. That would also be incredibly helpful. And that is sometimes I kind of incorporate that sort of visualization into it as well. And that helps me so much. And if I still feel like I'm being hooked, if there's like something that's just like weighing me, a lot of times I'll say what I call the sovereignty statement. And Eileen Crispell taught it to me and I've kind of modified it for myself. And what I say is, I am a sovereign being. I have a God-given right to sovereignty in my mind, heart, body, spirit, and soul. If you are not of God or of the light or from God or from the light, you must leave my presence immediately, never to return. And I say that twice. And usually when I say it, I say it kind of angrily. <laughs> Just kind of like with that air of get the F away from me. Get out. You do not have permission to be here. Because we do have a God-given right to sovereignty. And no energies or entities or anything has permission to attach to us or to pull us down, we can say, be gone with you. And I know that sounds like simplistic, but I am telling you every single time I do it, I feel my energy lift and I breathe and I feel better. So you can take it, you can use it, you don't have to, you can laugh at it. I don't care. It works for me and it works for the other people I know who use it and the angels work too. So those are tools that I love because I can just stop in the moment. Like I don't need anything to do it. I can just whoosh and it's done. And I have gotten to the point in my healing journey where I call on the angels for everything, <laughs> like all the time. And when I forget to, I'm like, how did I forget that? Like. Of course, of course, just ask. So I just, yeah, for everything, for everything, for everything, because it 
I mean, it makes a difference. It really makes a difference. And we need that when you have a right to that. We have a right to sovereignty. We have a right to just be us without all the baggage and all the excess and all the wounds, all the open wounds. So I just wanted to share that because it was an experience I had recently and I felt like maybe somebody can relate to this. <laughs> oh, and just one more thing about the hook is that I, I've noticed that I feel, so I can identify the hook. Like I do have a visual of it where I see that it's like, oh, there's the hook hooking into the wound, but I also feel it in my body and I can feel the adrenaline start to go when I'm in the hook, when I'm getting hooked. And uh, that's kind of especially apparent on social media. If I'm interacting with somebody on social media, I can, it's like, it's like a zap. I can feel a zap or that hook. Cause you know how people like to kind of go at each other on social media and they're like, Oh, you're so stupid and whatever. Like there's always somebody who kind of wants to get you. You know what I mean? They always, there's always kind of somebody who wants to kind of get that adrenaline going and they're not thinking of it that way. It's not conscious for them, but the, people like to argue on the internet and they like to, you know, kind of go at you and say things because people are injured out there. Like people are hurting and people really like to just lash out and like throw their pain around and wound each other. And again, it's not a conscious thing, but it happens. And so I will notice sometimes on the internet, like if I'm interacting with somebody and they, like they'll say something and I'll feel like, I'll feel like a zap. I'm like, oh, and, and I've learned to just, when I feel that in my body, disengage. It's time to walk away and I don't have to go back at them because before my instinct <laughs> was always to react and fire back. Like, you're not gonna come at me, I'm gonna come at you. And that does not help anybody. It did not help me for sure. It would get my adrenaline going. And now if I feel the zap, I immediately disengage, do the clearing, ask the angels to clear my energy. I walk away, whatever, I'll put down the phone if I'm talking to somebody. You know, because we all have wounds, right? And it's really easy to inadvertently say something to somebody that will trigger their wound and will hook them. And then once they're hooked, a lot of times when we're coming from a triggered place, we want to fire back. I know for me, that has always been my first instinct is to be like, you hurt me, I hurt you more. You know, like I always want to, how dare you? How dare you? But I am learning to recognize that when it happens and I'm not always perfect, but I can, but I know like the more, I'm aware that I feel that in my body. Like I feel this tightness in my middle where it's just like a rod of like, it's just tight and it hurt. It's like, and it's hot, it gets hot. And it's like, it starts to flood kind of coming out from that spot. And I'm like, nope. So before it gets to the flooding point, when I just feel the, the first zap, I'm like, oh, nope. Um, it'd be great if I could anticipate the zap coming. And sometimes I can but sometimes I can't and the zap comes and I'm like, Oh, okay. Time to, time to walk away now. And sometimes I do do it very abruptly where I'm like, okay, I'm done with this conversation. I'm going to go now. <laughs> or I'll just say, I have to go now. <laughs> and, uh, then I've had to come and talk to people later and be like, Oh, well, this is what I, you know, discovered happening, but I knew it's just kind of like, I know I need to move away quickly so that I don't get engaged with that. I don't get hooked. And yeah, I'm not always uh, the most diplomatic about saying that because I just need to get apart from it. It's a work in progress. It's always a work in progress. So, <laughs> Have any of you noticed the similar kind of dynamic or situation or can you relate to this at all? Have you experienced something like this? Um, let me know in the comments below, tell me about it or, you know, just tell me how you, if you've gotten to the point where you notice when that's happening and you are able to disengage and see that like, this isn't mine or whatever. Like if you're, if you're at that point, uh, let me know what your tools are for, self-care basically for taking care of yourself and for walking away and and having that compassion for yourself and doing what you need to do to help 
yourself out of it and to help yourself through it and to not let yourself get mired down in the dark and spiral down. When I was my sickest, that's what would happen. I would just spiral down. Like somebody could lip, I'm not even kidding you, quite literally, somebody could look at me the wrong way and I would go into it because I was so all the time in fight or flight, fight or flight, fight, flight or freeze all the time. So anything could set my adrenals off because they were just flying all over the place all the time and I had zero control. It was, I was crazy. It was crazy and I was crazy. I felt crazy all the time and I didn't feel like I was even in my body or a part of myself and I would watch myself say and do things and just be sort of horrified like, oh, I shouldn't say that or whatever, but it would just be happening. And I, because my nervous system was just so wonky and so overloaded, I am so grateful to be out of that and to not be stuck in that fight, flight, or freeze and to be able to see when it happens now and be like, ah, oh, okay, that's happening and disengage. What a relief, eh? Oh. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I hope this has been informative and I hope it's made sense. I hope it was useful. If you like it, please give a thumbs up below down there. You can subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button over there. You can ding the bell next to it if you want to be notified when I post a new video, which I recommend because I have an irregular upload schedule. I wish you so many blessings on your continued healing journey. I hope you have the best tools to cope with whatever comes up. I hope you have support. I love you guys and I look forward to hearing from you. Stay curious and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.